Good morning. We would like to welcome you to the worship services of Broadmoor Baptist Church. We are so glad you've chosen to join us on this Lord's Day. We have a very special service in line for us today. We, this is a day every year that we get to honor our graduating high school seniors. We have quite a wonderful and unique class, and we are looking forward to celebrating this milestone with them. And we thank you for joining us today. Again, there's plenty of meetings going on around the church. If you'd like to be a part of a Sunday school class that meets by Zoom or any Bible studies, again, just call the church office and we'll be glad to help guide you through that process. And we'd love to see you during those midweek meetings. Again, it promises to be a great day of worship. We're so glad you've joined us. And we ask you to take this time now to prepare your hearts and minds for worship. Please join me in the call to worship. Come bless the Lord in whom we find our refuge and safety. Come bless the Lord who gives us a rich inheritance and surrounds us with abundance. Come bless the Lord who guides us on a path to eternal life, whose presence strengthens and sustains us. Let's worship God together. Please pray with me. Christ be with us, Christ within us, Christ beside us, Christ before us, Christ behind us, Christ to win us, Christ to comfort and restore us, Christ beneath us, Christ above us, Christ in quiet, Christ in danger, Christ in hearts of all that love us, Christ in mouth of friend and stranger. It is in the name of Christ we pray. Amen. Singing for the Lord is our God. 
It is our privilege to present uh, these graduating seniors, the class of 2020, to those of you of Broadmoor Baptist Church and for those watching online. Again, it is a joy to celebrate uh, this mile marker uh, of life uh, with these young people. We want to thank everybody in the church that has been a, a, an influence on them through teaching, through mentoring, through being family, through being friends. Uh, they could not have reached this place without the support of many in their lives. And we thank you as a church congregation for supporting them throughout the years. Uh, all of these kids who have grown up in this church, when I mean grown up in this church, they were born here and they have spent their entire life with us at Broadmoor Baptist, and we are so grateful for that. But we would like to take this time to recognize them, to introduce you to them, and to tell you some things about them. Our first graduating senior is Parker Neal DeVries. Parker is graduating from St. Michael the Archangel High School his future plans are to attend Northwestern State University. Parker will be majoring in electrical engineering. And throughout the years, Parker has been in, active here in our church through Mission Friends, Vacation Bible School, the Youth Group, Sunday School, Children's and Youth Choirs. He's attended several lock-ins and has been a part of music camp as both a participant and a leader. Uh, he has taken part in the annual cake bake-off. He was a uh, involved in RAs and of course has attended Passport and we are so grateful that he has blessed us with the with his time in those activities. His mom is Whitney Dees who also grew up here at Broadmoor Baptist Church and while at St. Michael the Archangel uh, Parker was active and recognized for his time in soccer and in cross country. We are so grateful to present to you Mr. Parker DeVries. Our next student is Ms. Angeli, Ainsley Page Nunley. Ainsley is graduating from Live Oak High School. Her, her future plans include attending Louisiana State University, and she will major in kinesiology and pre-athletic training. Ainsley has been active in many ways here at Broadmoor Baptist Church in our music camps as a participant and as a teacher. Uh, she has participated in all of our passport camps each summer. Uh, she's been a part of Bible school, children's and youth choir, handbells, a GAs. She's on the youth advisory board. She's worked in extended session. Uh, she's uh, been a teacher for our young children's Bible study time on Sunday evenings. And she has also uh, been our social media intern and so a lot of the things you have seen on Facebook uh, have been due to Ainsley's talents and we are so grateful for her sharing those talents with us. Her parents are Jack Nunley and Crystal Nunley. Her grandparents are Fred and Betty Lou Nunley and while she was at Live Oak Ainsley has been uh, active and recognized for the uh, Soaring Eagle Award which is the AP Scholar with Distinction Speaker. Uh, she has been an FBLA state finalist in entrepreneurship and sports management, and uh, she is also an Eagle ambassador. Ainsley will enter LSU as a sophomore since she has already accumulated 32 college credits. And I'm proud to present to you again Ms. Ainsley Page Nunley. Our next student is Ms. Emily Elizabeth O'Quinn. Emily is graduating from Dutchtown High School. She will be attending LSU and majoring in biological sciences uh, in hopes for a medical career. Emily has been active here at Broadmoor Baptist Church in our music camps, again, both as a camper and as a leader. Uh, she's been active in youth Sunday school, passport camps throughout the summer, vacation Bible school, youth and children's choirs, handbells, GAs, and is also an active participant in our youth group activities. Her parents are Beth and Shane O'Quinn. And while Emily was at Dutchtown High School, 
Uh, she was active and recognized for Allied Health, Marching and Concert Band, and uh, also Rho Kappa. So we are so grateful that Emily has been a part of Broadmoor Baptist Church throughout her life. Our next student is Mr. Eli McCammon Rayburn. <laughs> Eli is a master at social distancing. Hey, uh, Eli is graduating from Baton Rouge Magnet High School and his future plans are to attend LSU and major in mechanical engineering. While Eli has been here at Broadmoor, he's been active in children's and youth choir, Sunday school, youth activities, uh, Bible studies, passport camps, and many other things here at the church. Eli's parents are myself, Bobby Rayburn, and Kelly Rayburn. His mom is Jennifer Borden. And while Eli has been at Baton Rouge High, he's been a part of the soccer team for four years uh, and the architecture program for four years as well. Again, it is my pleasure to present to you our graduating senior, Eli Rayburn. These are our four students. We want to take a time for you to get a good look at them and understand uh, that we are so grateful uh, that our quilters here at Broadmoor Baptist Church, led by Miss Dot Flory, have made quilts for them, and you've seen her handing those quilts out. Each, each graduate has a quilt uh, that they will be able to take with them to school or leave at home for a keepsake. And then also Dr. Ezell has been presenting them with a gift, a token of our appreciation and gratitude for all that they've been a part of and done here at Broadmoor Baptist Church throughout the years. Uh, but this is our graduating class of 2020. Each year, Broadmoor Baptist Church awards four scholarships to graduating youth members. They are selected by our Youth Advisory Committee. The first is the Jeffrey S. Bergeron Academic Scholarship. It's awarded to the graduating high school senior who possesses the highest non-weighted GPA based upon their senior year. That scholarship goes to Emily O'Quinn. The second scholarship is the Robert D. Narr Spirit Award. It's awarded to the graduating high school senior who possesses a commitment to service and personal spiritual growth while encouraging others to great participation in the Broadmoor Baptist Church Youth Ministry. And that scholarship goes to Eli Rayburn. The third scholarship is the James Patrick Haney Impact Award awarded to the graduating high school senior who best exemplifies a spirit of servanthood in the church and community, seeking to be an encouraging and positive influence to all. That scholarship goes to Ainsley Nunnally. And our fourth scholarship is the God in Country Award, awarded to the graduating high school senior who has demonstrated a high degree of love and respect for America, has participated in school and private organizations that foster love of God and country. That scholarship goes to Parker DeVries. Congratulations to each of our graduating seniors. I now invite you at home to join me in our graduation litany. We are gathered together to celebrate the accomplishments of members of our community. We give blessings to you for all that you have achieved and many more achievements to come. One part of your life's journey is complete. You will prepare to begin another phase that will take you to unimaginable places. As you prepare for your next journey, we hope that you remember the ones you leave behind who have loved and supported you throughout the years.
Use those memories as a beacon to guide you on your path. Don't look back. Continue only forward while using those memories to create a new path. Because we are made in the image of God, we have been blessed with free will to make choices and decisions. Will you join me as we pray? You have grown up here on the stories of God. We have told them to you, sung them to you, acted them out, hoping to teach them to you, and in turn, with gratitude, listen to you tell them to us, sing them, act them out, teaching us in the process. We have tried to live them as best we could, confessing our failures. Confessing to our assurance that it is far better to have tried to live these stories and fallen short of their, fulfill, their fullness than to given up on the possibilities within them and never tried to live them at all. We have prayed for you more than you know, both in frequency and in urgency. Amidst our prayers, we give thanks for you continually. And today, we celebrate your achievement with pride in what you have done and in who we see you becoming. We will not put words in your mouths, words of profession, words of commitment, and we pray less that you claim any particular propositions of belief than those that you believe in the stories you've grown up with and on. The possibilities of the world being turned upside down and inside out. We pray these stories will sustain you, encourage you, inspire you, transform you, and accompany you wherever you go, in whatever you do, because these are the stories we believe, so much richer than most any story of our culture. The stories of great inversion, of tremendous surprise, of profound wonder, of deep joy, of God's truth and grace, God's love, and the redeeming of all creation. These are the stories we pray you remember, reread, rethink, and choose. Choose to live toward. Choose to live into. We have no more important gift to offer you. These are the stories we pray you come to dream worth your own selves. It is this we pray today and through the years to come. In the name of Christ, amen.
Scripture reading today will be from John 10, verses 1 through 10, New Revised Standard Version. Jesus, the the Good Shepherd, very truly I tell you, anyone who does not enter the shepherd fold by the gate but climbs in by another way is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leaves them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because he knows his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. This is the word of God for the people of God.
Good morning. Pray with me, please. God, we ask now that you speak to our hearts and our minds in a way that will move our hands and our feet. And so may your word fall into our hearts like seed into good soil that it might bear fruit, flourish, and grow in our lives. In Christ we pray. Amen. How wonderful to know someone is watching over us. To know that there are those who lead, whose very voices might tell us they're watching over us, that they're for us, that they're protecting us, that we are safe. Jesus hints at that in today's scripture. He's just angered the reverence after healing a man on the wrong day. Then he showed them how the blind actually see more clearly than those who claim to see but who are blind. He was speaking more metaphorically than he was about physical limitations. Something akin to Noah Ben Shea's character in Jacob the Baker who says, who says, the blind are those who know too much to learn anything. Christ's words in John 10 comes across as a riddle. I hope you like riddles. I like riddles. One of my favorites I heard back in college goes like this. You can write it down. When I leave home, I make one right and three lefts, and then I'm home again. Solve the riddle. Christ's words in John 10 comes across like a riddle. Verse 6 says he spoke in a figure of speech. His listeners did not understand. Apparently, they know too much to learn anything. But they have a point. Jesus' words aren't always clear. Even his disciples are confused. In John 16, they celebrate, yes, now you are finally speaking plainly without any figure of speech. And so in John 10, 24, our passage, when his audience has heard all that he's been saying about himself, they say, how long will you keep us in suspense if you are the Messiah? Just tell us plainly. Apparently, they don't get riddles. And there's what we do not know about this passage. John 10 is it the beginning, or are we to follow it, or let it follow John chapter 9? We don't know where it takes place either. The festival of dedication, or as it says in chapter 7, the Feast of Tabernacles. And maybe you're asking yourself, why does any of this matter? Here's why. To show us not only is Jesus not speaking plainly, but John himself isn't writing plainly. And it gets more confusing. Because Jesus calls himself the shepherd. But then he speaks of a gatekeeper. And a gatekeeper who opens a gate for the shepherd. A little later he says, I am the gate. So it sounds like Jesus is the one holding himself open for himself to enter. And how can the one who is the gate, the gatekeeper and the shepherd, also allow thieves and robbers to climb over him. And what is the sheepfold? And who are the sheep and the thieves and the bandits? You can see why his audience wants him to stop speaking in riddles and start speaking plainly. I confess there are a lot of preachers who would appreciate some help as well. By the end of this parable, we're going to be wondering if we are blind too. Well, here's a rule. With riddles, you begin with what you know for sure. What do we think we know? Well, we think Jesus is warning his sheep about certain types of leadership, in particular about leaders that his flock, the church, might be tempted to follow but are bad. But that's confusing. I've always heard that the thief in this parable is actually the devil. But it isn't in John 10. It isn't mentioned. I don't want to go adding something to the scriptures. And also, it wouldn't be helpful because Jesus is warning us about being able to discern those 
who merely pose as shepherds from those who are the true shepherds, the real ones, not devils or anti-Christian forces. Some say he's talking about the Old Testament prophets and leaders, those that led before Christ came. The problem is we just can't see Jesus calling David and Isaiah and Jeremiah and Hosea and Amos and all those shepherds thieves and bandits when God himself called each one to shepherd the flock of Israel. And some say if John 10 follows John 9, then he's talking about the Pharisees and the reverends of his day who claim to see but who are blind, blind to who he is and blind to his vision. Leaders who use their political connections and their privileged positions for their own profit and security. That is, leaders that are in it for themselves and not for the flock. And still, some say he's talking about the rebels, the insurrectionists, and the self-proclaimed messiahs who turn out to be just as oppressive and violent as the oppressors that they fought to overcome. That some leaders appear to be well-meaning shepherds, but once they've gathered their flock together, they turn out to be a little more than self-serving wolves in shepherds' clothing, who care more about their own agenda than they do about their flock. Then again, maybe he has in mind Christian leaders of his own day who sneak into the church through the back doors and windows, pounding their fists on Bibles, claiming to be prophets and authorities, mouthing scriptures, proclaiming Holy Spirit for their sheep. They look the part of sincere shepherds, but they are wolves who have slipped in over the fence. As Fred Craddock puts it, the entire New Testament in early Christian literature warned the churches of those who lined their stomachs and their purses, leaving behind a divided, confused, hurt, and discouraged flock. They find the people of God an easy mark, and the sheep easily fall for it. It's believed that in John 10, he has in mind a passage from Ezekiel 34, where shepherds of the people are accused of feeding themselves instead of feeding their flocks. They're accused of strengthening themselves instead of strengthening the weak, of binding their own wounds rather than binding the wounds of their flock, of leaving the sheep who went astray and got lost. Instead, Ezekiel says, these shepherds have ruled by force and harshness. Instead of lovingly serving the sheep, they've ruled them. The sheep were left to the wild animals and devoured. And so the Lord God says, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out. How do we then discern or tell the shepherds who climb over the fence and through the windows, sneak in the back doors of the church, from the shepherds who are doing their best to serve as Christ served? He says, it's by recognizing his voice. They recognize Christ's voice in the voice of their shepherds. Christ is a voice still speaking to us, the sheep, in our own day. And what does Christ say? How do we truly know him? Well, he tells us in the answer to his riddle. There's a key to his riddle. Unlocking it, the riddle of the gate, the gatekeeper and the shepherd. The key is, I have come that they might have abundant life. Abundant life. The false shepherds come to kill, to steal, and destroy, but the good shepherd comes to bring abundant life. And get this, he's been giving us the ingredients to abundant life from the beginning. The first ingredient is water. In John 4, to the thirsty woman at the well, 
He says, everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become to them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. The second ingredient is bread. In John 6, to the hungry crowd on the mountain, do not work for food that spoils, but for food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. Sir, they said, always give us this bread. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry. The third ingredient is light. In John 9, the disciples in the dark about the blind man, Jesus says, night is coming, but while I am in the world, I am the light of the world. And the fourth in ingredient from our passage is shelter. Shelter. In John 10, to those who are fearing the wolves in sheep's clothing, he says, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate but climbs in by another way is a thief and a bandit. But the one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for them. The sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and lets them out. Well, sensing their confusion... He says, I am the gate. And whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy, but I come that they might have life and have it abundantly. Water, bread, light, shelter. Ingredients to an abundant life. A mother had two children an older girl and a younger boy. Her daughter was old enough to walk to school by herself, but her younger son, the mother had to walk to school. These two were competitive siblings, and one day he says to his mother, why does my sister get to walk to school alone by herself? And she said, because she's a big girl. He said, I want to be a big boy. I want to walk to school by myself. And so his mother led him. Later in life, when they were older, these competitive siblings were arguing over what age their mother let them walk to school by themselves. The older girl said, Mother let me walk to school by myself when I was nine years old. And the boy said, Well, I was seven years old when her mother let me walk to school by myself. She said, you think you've got to walk to school by yourself at seven years old? He said, yeah, every morning, mom hugged me by and I walked to school by myself. And then after school, I'd walk home alone and then she'd be waiting for me. She said, mom didn't let you walk home alone at seven years old. Every morning when you walked to school, she would follow you from a distance, hiding behind the trees and the bushes until you got to school. And then after, sc after school, every afternoon, she would follow you home in the same way, following you from a distance, hiding behind trees and bushes, but then she'd have to run to the back door to get inside before you walked in. Haven't you ever wondered why mom was always out of breath when you came home from school? You just thought you were alone. We think we walk this world alone while encountering dangers, wolves in shepherds' clothing. To us, it might look and feel like freedom, the freedom to come and go. The good shepherd gives us his sheep freedom, the sense of security and safety of someone watching over us. But because there are dangers and there are wolves in shepherd's clothing, the good shepherd follows us from a distance, watching over us. How wonderful to know someone is watching over us. That there will be those who lead, whose very voices might tell us they're watching over us, that they're for us, that they're protecting us, that we are safe. I hope you liked his riddle. 
And speaking of riddles and speaking of safe, the answer to my riddle, when I leave home, I make one right and three lefts, and then I'm home again. The answer, it's a baseball game. Leaving home and coming home, we are safe. Amen. Part of our worship is our offering to God. And though we can't give by passing the plate, you'll find a tab online to give, and you may give by bringing your offering to the church office or by mailing it. Again, I want to say congratulations to our graduating seniors. If you'd like to send cards of encouragement and congratulations to our seniors, just call the church office and we'll send you their address. Folks, we've gathered together in this sanctuary in the sanctuary of your home to hear the words of Christ that we might go and do the deeds of Christ. Let's go now with these words of benediction. You have been given your rest. Now go and proclaim with your lives the good news of Jesus Christ. Go following the good shepherd and be the good shepherd for others. Amen. <laughs>